Hello ladies and metal Jan and welcome to the 121 HD re-review the Chinese tier 10 medium tank as always let's begin with the armor so this thing gets 120 millimeter upper plate well on a T-54 that's pretty damn impressive on a tank like this is nothing really to gloat about you're not really gonna bounce anything much worse than on the 140 uh, you can really get only bounces when you're uh, in some kind of extreme angles and this tank doesn't have the gun depression to cope with that so the most you're gonna get while able to shoot somebody is like something like this which is still not quite enough to reliably bounce anything so do not count on this upper plate to really save you lower plate also a massive weak spot to give uh, the tier uh, 5 and 6 and 7 light tanks something to shoot at Nothing you really can do about this, always gonna pen and pretty sure the gas tank is on one side, the driver on the other and the ammo rack is somewhere over here as well. So uh, yeah, this is, you know, pretty, pretty bad as you would expect. When we come to the turret front, doesn't get much better actually. I mean, it's 240, which might seem like a lot, but when you get shot in the front of the turret by a tier 10 medium and actually get penned, you're kind of sad that you're not driving a very well armored tank at all, it seems. I mean. The third is quite bouncy in the most cases, but you really, really notice those shots that go through these areas, and they do happen every once in a while, and obviously you have a cupola weak spot as well. Top of it is really weak, top of the third is really weak as well, uh, just above the gun mantle, you can get some ridiculous pens on this uh, or when you're driving this tank, and uh, the other side is slightly better, but uh, still this cupola is rather huge, so it's rather hard to hide this thing. Uh, properly when it comes to the side armor 80 not too bad but you know it's not gonna be a great side scraper as uh, you're always gonna have this plate sticking out before you can shoot somebody which means that a well-aimed shot will be able to pen you before you can even shoot at your enemies then again always better to side scrape than to show your inner track and get tracked and fucked that way and uh, nothing really else to talk about here so let's look at the gun depression real quick so you have four to the front and one to the back. I think it used to be three, three and a half. Thought it's three and a half now, but apparently this is four. No, well, fair enough. Doesn't. Really, oh no, wait. It's actually three. It's it is three and a half. This is this is bullshitting me. It is three and a half most likely. Um, I don't really want to lie, but I'm almost 100% sure this is 3.5 and elevation obviously you get 15 which is not too bad. Anyways, let's get into the game and talk about the rest of the crap in there. So here we are playing airfield, really heavy tier 10 game, gonna cut the start a bit here and uh, going to the pocket like I usually am and the first engagement comes right away. We do get to shoot on the move, uh, but uh, we do get penned back once as well, but I do get to uh, not get shit on by the TDs, which was, you know, the main goal here anyways. Anyways, let's talk stats, so 1950 hit points, view range 400, top speed forwards 56, backwards 20, power to weight 14.99, tank traverse 50, turret traverse 40, soft stats better than on uh, the 105 mediums, the, well, anyways, the mediums with the 105 guns, but worse than on the Russians, when, with that power to weight means that this is probably, if not the slowest, then definitely one of the slowest medium tanks in uh, the game at tier 10 for sure. And when it comes to general mobility, this tank loses out on tanks like 50B113 and even the E5 when it comes to the short runs as well. Obviously the top speed will uh, benefit you in the long run, but uh, uh, the acceleration on this tank is really bad for a medium, it's more like a heavy really and you can really feel it once you have to start climbing hills you're gonna get overtaken by, th overtaken by things you really don't expect to overtake a medium tank then we come to the guns so this tank rocks a 122 millimeter obviously uh 2750 dpm 440 damage per shot 258 pen 2.7 aiming time 0.35 dispersion and the soft stats well, nothing to really gloat about, obviously gonna be worse than on all the other mediums, pretty much. This tank is kinda in a weird spot in this game, it's really weird that they didn't give it more love when it got made into HD, but in the same way, it is kinda powerful, it's just that it's very niche and, you know, it is really, really dependent on how good your positioning is, unlike a lot of other mediums that can get uh, you away from shitty situations, this thing definitely will not do that, you really need to position this properly in order to be effective. 
when the 121 got introduced in the game, it was one of the highest DPM mediums in the game, lacking slightly behind the Russians, but as the years passed, Wargaming buffed pretty much all the other 105 mediums, apart from the E50M, I'm pretty sure, DPM-wise, and probably the Batchet as well. But uh, every other medium got buffed in DPM quite significantly. Tanks like the Patana now actually have higher DPM. Tanks like the STB-1 uh, has also much higher DPM. So, it's kind of weird uh, that this tank used to, you know, be very powerful because of the high DPM, and now it doesn't really have that anymore. And you gotta ask yourself, is the 440 Alpha really worth all the fucking shitty things about this tank? I mean, you pay for the 440 Alpha damage with mediocre DPM, and that is not actually an overstatement. I'm pretty sure close to 50% tanks, because of all the Russian clones, actually have higher DPM than this now. Uh, you have 3.5 gun depression, which is absolutely abysmal. Pretty much the worst mobility of all the tier 10 mediums as well. Pretty lackluster frontal armor and uh, pretty lackluster turret as well. While it can and will bounce quite a lot, it is not that hard to pen at all. And add to that, you have a really shitty line with tanks like the WZ120 being completely raped by the accuracy nerf, being probably the worst tier 9 medium in the game now. Then you have the T34 II, which is absolute joke. Uh, Absolutely horrible, probably the worst tier 8 medium tank in the game. You could always go through the light tank route, and that is probably the recommended one, because, you know, the fucking medium, the T-34-2 one is just so bad. At the same time, though, you're gonna have a really, really bad stock grind if you skip the mediums. And uh, have not done the Chinese heavy tank grind either. So really, you gotta ask, is this really worth it? Well... The surprising thing is, I actually fucking love to play this tank for some reason now. I don't know what it is. I mean, the gun handling is not great for a medium, but for the fact that it hits this hard is probably the most, you know, satisfying gun to play with, at least for me. I really enjoy playing this tank uh, for quite a while now. I'm pretty sure after they changed it, I've been playing this way more than I've been playing the 113 uh, just because of this gun handling. And another added benefit, this is probably my favorite looking tank in the entire game now with the HD model, so that is alone a good enough reason for me to play this every once in a while. But you should not get this tank, you should get the 113, it's a much more sensible choice. It has slightly worse gun handling in every way possible, it has uh, much better frontal armor, better but more hit points, and it also has 5 degrees of gun depression which makes it usable in way more situations than the 121. Anyways, equipment on this thing, bridge stabs, ventilation and rammer. Don't really want to go for optics with this, I rather prefer the vents to improve the gun handling, to improve the reload, to make this a better brawler. It's not really the sniper anyways, and you know, with this gun depression it's really hard to peek ridges and spot and shoot for yourself anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I prefer vents over optics here for sure. And the crew skills are the good old stuff. But, you know, six sense, smooth ride snapshot, uh, situational awareness, recon, safe storage. I also have a jack of all trades on the commander as the driver do get to, does get killed in pretty much every shot you ever fucking take in this thing. So how to play the 121? Well, as I said before, this tank is all about your positioning. You really, really need to make sure that you'll have enough gun depression to play the position you're in. Taking advantage of uh, corpses of other tanks is really important. This is, uh, does have rather low profiles, you can only use uh, uh, medium tanks as cover and actually shoot the, over them as well. You really want to hide this hull as it is not very well armored whatsoever. So it is all about, you know, positioning. You need to make sure that you're in a position where your armor is gonna work and you need to make sure that you're in a position where you can actually harm your enemies well with you know the absolute lack of gun depression. Playing against the 121 is uh, usually a pretty easy experience though as most 121 players well as most players in this game are bad and bad players in the 121 are definitely not to be worried about. Uh, if you find the 121 in a good position just fall back and make him fight in uh, a favorable position for you instead of trying to fight on his terms. Try to take advantage uh, that this tank has bad gun handling, so you are most of the time gonna get away with quick peeks. Well, can't say you're gonna get away, you have a, a good chance of getting away, uh, so you should try to take advantage of that, and of course, you know, 
If you have a worse DPM, then don't try to sit there and trade. Anyways, we were kind of losing this game, then we were kind of winning this game, and now we're losing this game once again. The camping DDs kind of got the better of our, our of our team so far, and now the gorilla fucks up that one massively, so he's going to be dead. And now we're not losing this anymore all that much, so... We have the Egg Panzer in the middle, uh, T30 in the other side on this side of the pocket, and of course the Egg Tiger masturbating in the corner. That was lucky. That was truly lucky if I was still spotted, that is. If I wasn't, maybe not so lucky, I don't know. I'm not sure if the Egg Panzer could see me or not. The Egg Panzer did blind shoot me before, so it's very possible that this was a blind shot as well. He's definitely not a good player, uh, not a bad player as. Uh, as blind shooting like that is uh, it's a decent sign of a uh, competent player. Anyways, this is a pretty shitty fight against the Akpanzi, so we should fuck off and see if the D30 isn't trying to rush me. Uh, we can't take the D30 and the Tiger hit, but the Akpanzi obviously could easily high roll me. Uh, and now I don't want to sit here because the Tiger might still be able to shoot me. Now the grill is making an assault on the T30 and we're gonna try to support him, not really sure if it's a great idea, but if we can get the shot without getting shot back then we might be able to finish the T30 off and that could work out just fine for us. And he does catch him out in the side, gets a shot off and actually doesn't get shot back as well and I get a high roll to get the kill. So this works out uh, just fine for us and now it's just the Yak Panzer and the Yak Tiger remaining, which Two of us should be able to manage. The Krill is playing well so far, so no doubt, uh, no reason to doubt how good or bad he is at the moment. So, you know, this doesn't look as bad as it looked like two minutes ago, but we're still, uh, we still definitely have a fight in front of us. So, no, there's no point really going for this shot with the damaged 121's gun. There's n it could not do damage even if I would hit him, so it's pretty irrelevant. Now when he falls back, I have an opportunity to scout for the Yak Tiger a bit and maybe go for the flanking, which is actually uh, probably the right thing to do now. I could easily flank the Yak uh, Panzer over the hill, and uh, as long as the Gorilla stays alive and keeps him busy, I should uh, be just fine with this flanking. But the Gorilla is making a pretty silly run now. Not really sure why would he do that, as there is no reason for him to... Uh, to even try to do this, but he does get himself killed for not a really good reason there So now it's just me against two of these DDs and the first one on the plate is the Yak Panzer Not really in much danger here as he just fired. I have may way more than enough time to kill him I could have gone for the tracking shot to be absolutely 100% sure But at the same time I did not want to miss out on the damage as I do have a damaged gun So now this is me against what probably is a full health Yak Tiger since he is a turretless TD, I am quite confident in my ability to kill him. The worst part here would be to take a shot on the way to his cap circle. So I am going to try to spot uh, for myself and maybe I can see him. Maybe he has closed the distance or something. I need to make sure that he's not anywhere here before making this cross to the cap circle. And since we cannot uh, see him, we will have to go for that cap now. You have plenty of time with four minutes to fuck around for two more minutes and then only go for the cap, but there's no reason to do any of that, so... Just can go straight to the cap. The cap is my best bet to win this game, as the Yak Tiger will have to come close and try to reset me, and when he does that, and as long as he doesn't blow me up in one shot, as long as he doesn't track me, I am gonna kill him pretty much every time. So, now the only thing I need to make sure of is that my position is uh, well covered for from most angles and this is fine for the most part it's kind of bad because if he goes from in front of me he is going to be able to shoot me from rather long way away and i don't want that i want him to have to come as close as uh, possible and this position is much better for that well this tank isn't a sprinter as i mentioned before yak tiger is a fucking horrible tank and we will be able to flank him as i said as long as he does not track me or blow me up in one shot and those well the tracking could happen if i'm unlucky but uh i should just try to point my front towards him when he shoots me and i should be just fine then this is kind of an annoying part in the game to wait if the guy is gonna make it or not in the time in time and just to make sure that you cannot get flanked i also realize i should not be have my ass sticking out that way that would be a pretty bad way to lose this game but the act tiger should be here any moment, so we should just keep an eye out for uh, things getting crushed in the cap circle. 
at the angle that he's most likely to be coming from, which is, uh, you know, front, and now we see some distraction. So here he comes, we're gonna close the distance here, as he might be able to shoot me there, and he doesn't go for the tracking shot, so this game is already over. Uh, Christmas have come early, 2100 free damage, fucking love the Yak Tiger, such a good tank. Such a good tank, 10 out of 10. This player isn't very good either, and I'm not even sure what the fuck am I looking at there, and now this is, this is really, really awkward. And now, magical tracking, uh, but so, uh, luckily for me, the Yak Tiger is um, not very smart, so he's just sh shoving his ass up my face, which, you know, I don't mind too much in this case. Also, this is not bug, comrade, it's feature. I actually did see that in the game as well, it's not just a replay bug. It's a very good feature of the new HD Yak Tiger model. So yeah, Christmas come early, thanks for that HP buff on the Yak Tiger, really appreciate the free damage. Anyways, here's the end plate, Ace Tanker, 5,499 experience with a triple, high caliber and top gun as well as medium tank 15 with a secondary condition as well, which is nice, I didn't actually have that before. We did 6,690 damage and 182 assistance as well as picking up 6 kills and 1,222 base experience. So, 121, yay or nay? Kind of hurts to say this, but fuck nay. I mean, I do love this gun, and I do love how this tank looks, but fuck me, the line is horrible. Like, the medium grind is so fucking bad. The T-34-2, absolutely horrific. The T WZ-120, now absolutely idiotic as well, with an absolutely horrible stock grind. Probably the worst tier 9 medium with the worst stock grind, with the worst tier 8 medium, so... The line is absolutely atrocious and at the end of that you kind of get a mediocre medium that is kind of a one-trick pony. So, yeah, not really recommended this thing. I mean, I do love it though in its clunky ways. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you on the next one.